founded in the year 400 before our current era. A mega city that reached its uh, developmental peak between the years of 300 and 400 of our current era. And a mega city that experiences a declining population, an intentional burning of artifacts and religious items, and an abandonment of the city starting in the year 600 of our current era, and by the year 700 of our current era, this city is abandoned with nobody living here anymore. This is the city of Teotihuacan, the city or the place where men become gods. This is the name that was given to the city by the Aztecs, who found this place centuries later when they explored this area and end up, end up adopting this space as a ceremonial space for themselves. The Aztecs believe when they found this place that these pyramids held the bodies of rulers that this place had to be built by somebody, by a civilization that was very much advanced. There are various versions of other names to the city. One of those versions is uh, the city of the sun because of the pyramid and because of the name. What is true is that at one point, this city was populated by a number between 125,000 people to up to 250,000 people. A number that it's incredibly high compared to other places around the world at this time. This was a commercial, a political, a religious, and an artistic mecca for many people. There are other versions of how this place came to be. This include uh, the idea that the Toltecs were uh, very near this area, uh, were the ones that built this mega city. However, the Toltecs do not build anything that looks like this or anything near this uh, into the time that they appear, which is around the year 900. This is 200 years after uh, the decline or the abandonment of this uh, mega city. Others believe that it was the Totonac people. The Totonac people are uh, native to the state of Veracruz, in the Gulf Coast of Mexico. They have a city called Tajin that they built, and it's also a magnificent city. Uh, this is the people that um, created or gave to Mesoamerica the ceremony known as Los Voladores de Papantla. Papantla is a small town also in Veracruz. These are the five people that climb a pole, and on top of the pole there is a man standing, and then the other four uh, people are tied to a rope, and they go in 13 circles around this pole, representing uh, 
a uh, constellation in the sky. And the last version is that this city or this mega city was built by a combination of people because it was known uh, that this is a place where uh, many different uh, cultures uh, found a new star refuge uh, and they live here. It's known that this city had a Mayan, a Mixtec, and at least um, one Zapotec neighborhood. And you can see this in the remains and the archaeological findings that uh, the experts have found in this place. This is Teotihuacan, located in the Valley of Mexico, about 30 miles away from the city, uh, the city capital of the country of Mexico, Mexico City. And here is a uh, an image of how Teotihuacan looks like. The way that Teotihuacan is arranged is in a grid layout that covers about eight square mile, miles. Uh, is laid from uh, north to south. It has about two thousand single story apartment compounds with various pyramids, plazas, temples and palaces of nobles and priests. All of these uh, buildings are dedicated to the entities or the deities that the Teotihuacanos believe in, which include uh, the Jawar religion, which is something that possibly people from Teotihuacan inherited from the Olmecs, they also have the deity of Quetzalcoatl, the flying feather serpent, and this connects them to other Mesoamerican cultures. They have the deity of Tlaloc. Tlaloc is the deity that represents rain and water. Under this uh, temples that you see here in this magnificent city, uh, anthropologists have found remains of humans. Many of these human remains are ceremonial burials of warriors, some that have been buried with jade masks and other uh, important garments and uh, personal belongings. There are also uh, remains of people that were uh, believed to be buried with their hands tied behind their back. And there they ha have also found uh, remains of wolf, coyotes, the coyotes, jaguars, pumas, and different kinds of birds. What uh, this city traded with other people, just like most of these, uh, actually all of these uh, Mesoamerican civilizations that were linked by trade. Teotihuacan traded obsidian, obsidian tools, a spear and dart heads for war, cotton, cacao beans or chocolate beans, feathers and all kinds of shells and garments that help uh, make different types of clothing. Their diet was based on beans, avocados, peppers, squash, and corn. They believed to be the first people in Mesoamerica that domesticated turkeys. And they also had domesticated chickens. 
and of course dogs. Between the years of 600 and 700 of our current era, the city was intentionally burned down. Much of the artworks of the city were destroyed, as well as religious sculptures. For this, there's, there's uh, various theories. One of the theories is that there was an uprising for the, from the uh, uh, poor masses against the elite of this place, which also was an elite that was uh, religious or spiritually based. A people that rose up against their rulers. Other theories uh, point out to the possibility that the people of uh, Teotihuacan got invaded by outsiders, maybe by enemies, uh, or people that they had under their dominion who rebelled against them. The truth of these things are not known. Some anthropologists have made a connection between Teotihuacan to this city called Quilco. Uh, this is another city that is located in the Valley of Mexico. This uh, ancient city is believed to be related to the Olmec culture, a city that at one point had a population of about 20,000 uh, inhabitants. This uh, predates uh, Teotihuacan, and for that reason, uh, experts uh, point out that it's possible that the people that built Teotihuacan, or a, a significant number of people that founded Teotihuacan, may have come from this place. Cuicuilco was destroyed and abandoned when the volcano nearby erupted around the year 250. This is about uh, 150 years before Teotihuacan was settled and people began to stay there. It is believed that the migration of this place led to the foundation of Teotihuacan. Also because uh, you can see Olmec uh, influence in Teotihuacan. And this Olmec influence includes the cult of the Jawar that I talked about a little bit in the um, other lecture when I talked about the Olmecs. Uh, this cult of the Jawar influence uh, the way that people uh, interact with each other. And as I mentioned in this lecture, uh, they have found remains in burials, ceremonial burials of different animals, including jowers and pumas and many others, which means that this religion and these beliefs of the Olmecs survived or were shared with the people of the Tihuacan. This is a uh, timeline chart that shows you um, how these uh, civilizations that we're talking about uh, emerge. So when you think about these civilizations, you have to uh, apply these three time periods to uh, each one of them. And we're talking about the pre-classic. Again, the pre-classic is the time when people are populating. There's uh, population growth, there's adaptation, there's development, uh, but it's uh, going uh, very uh, slow. Eventually, that is going to lead to a place where uh, things are going to accelerate, and this will be the peak of a uh, civilization. And when that, when that happens, that would be known as the classic. Uh, classic meaning the peak of civilization. And then you have the beginning of the decline of that civilization. Uh, and as we have learned, in many of these cultures, there is a decline in these cities, and people leave, and they end up uh, founding uh, new cultures or 
new cities somewhere else. So when you're looking at this chart, you want to look at the pre-classic, the classic, and the post-classic in the middle, in the very center of this image. And then what you want to do next is you want to read this from left to right, and you want to point your eyes into the Olmecs or the Olmecas. The Olmecs are the oldest, the mother culture of all the civilizations. And after the Olmecs, you have the Mayans at the left bottom. And then after, below the Mayans, you have the Zapotecas or Zapotecs. So this is the order of these civilizations. You have the Olmecs, then the Mayans, then the Zapotecs. The Mayans continue to exist and they uh, experience their uh, classic period. The Zapotecs also experience their classic period. And when these two cultural groups, including the Olmecs, experience their uh, classical period, you have the people like the uh, Totihuacanos and the Totonacs who also experience this uh, classical period. Again, the peak of civilization from there, for them. Then you have the appearance of the Toltecs and the Mexicas or Aztecs at the end. So the very last group in this timeline that we're talking about would be the Mexicas or the Aztecs. When you learn about um, indigenous cultures or when you think about the country of Mexico, usually the group that comes to mind is the Aztecs. When you hear about a boxing match, or even uh, the Mexican soccer team playing, uh, usually you think about the Aztecs or the Aztec warrior boxer guy that is boxing, right? Uh, but the reality of things is that the Aztecs are the very last group that emerges in this uh, timeline. And besides the Aztecs, there are about 54 different indigenous groups in Mexico today. Uh, one of the issues that I talk about in my uh, Chicano Studies 102 is the issue of identity, and uh, the identity of the country of Mexico is something that uh, needs to be discussed more. Fortunately, in this class, we have a book that you are reading called uh, Mexico Profundo, Deep Mexico, that gives you a little bit of that analogy or that uh, critical thinking about this issue of identity. Uh, so we'll have some discussions about that. Again, uh, obsidian is one thing that uh, in this part of uh, Mesoamerica or Anahuac, uh, it's extremely important. And definitely, obsidian is extremely important for trade in Teotihuacan. Later on, uh, other civilizations or people from other cities also make uh, obsidian their main uh, item that they trade. Cities like Tula, Cholula, in Puebla also do this. Uh, obsidian is used uh, to make weapons, surgical instruments, and also is used to make religious deities. Uh, it's important also to keep in mind that uh, Native people at this time had an understanding of uh, medicine and they didn't have the equipment that we have today but they knew how to uh, perform cranial and to some uh, articles that I saw somewhere uh, it's believed that they had they, they might have been doing uh, open heart surgery and things like that in the past I don't know how effective they were uh, but that is possible here you are looking at a map that shows you uh, the dominion or the influence, the cultural influence of the uh, of the Tihuacan over other people, and this is mainly through uh, two ways. One is uh, through trade, mainly, and the other one is uh, through conflict. <clears throat> and whenever you're looking at a map like this, and there's arrows pointing to different directions, you want to also um, remember that uh, every road it's a possible uh, two-way street or two-way road, okay? So the arrow is going in one direction. It's possible that the people are also going in the other direction. Not possible. It's very, uh, it's 100% possible that that's going to happen. 
Uh, so movement always goes both ways. Uh, therefore, this is also uh, a possible explanation of why you have people of different communities living in uh, Teotihuacan, because these arrows go both ways. Uh, you see, you can see uh, an influence of uh, the Teotihuacanos in places like Tolula, Cholula, uh, El Tajín, in uh, places like uh, Monte Albán in Oaxaca, and so on and so forth. Uh, in a past video, when I talked about the Mayans, in a past lecture, when I talked about the Mayans, I mentioned how uh, there's a connection between Tikal, the first uh, mega city for the Mayans, and Totihuacan. There's also a connection between uh, Monte Albán and Totihuacan. And that connection can be seen in some of the um, items that have been found under under the ground in uh, uh, Teotihuacan. And also because uh, we know that there is a uh, a, a neighborhood of, uh, of people from uh, Monte Alban uh, in Teotihuacan. Again, just like the Mayans, there are different uh, ideas of why uh, Teotihuacan uh, ends up uh, collapsing or being abandoned. Um, theory number one says that around 600 of our current era, or AD, uh, major buildings were deliberately uh, burned and artworks and religious sculptures, like I said, uh, were uh, destroyed. That's a theory that I gave you earlier. Second theory, uh, it's uh, invaders and invasion from uh, enemies. Um, Eventually, the city is abandoned by the year 750 of our current time. There's a theory that talks about um, once this uh, city gets uh, abandoned, the people have to go somewhere. And it's possible that they went and they uh, joined other cultures, intermarried with other cultures that already existed, or uh, there is also this possibility which connects them to the people of Cholula uh, because of its strategic uh, place, which is a halfway point between Oaxaca and the Gulf of Mexico. This is a very important place for uh, trade. And under this uh, church that you see here, you have the largest pyramid in the whole world. Yes, you heard me correct, the largest pyramid in the whole world. This thing that you see here, which is building a church on top of a pyramid. It's not the first or the last time that you're gonna see this in Mesoamerica. The Spanish were really good at doing these things. Uh, if you ever you ever visit uh, Mitla in uh, Oaxaca, a uh, mixtec uh, location, you will see that uh, the Spanish built a church on top of this place. Uh, here you have this happening. In Mexico City, uh, Spanish destroyed buildings uh, in what was uh, known as uh, Templo Mayor, a big ceremonial space in what is today uh, Tlatelolco in Mexico City, where uh, the Zócalo is, the center plaza. And they took those pieces of those uh, pyramids that they destroyed and they used them to build a cathedral that is in Mexico City. And that is it for this lecture. I will continue with the next uh, lecture. Have a good uh, day, and I will see you on these videos soon.